the biggest difference between the S5 Max and the S6 Pure is that the S5 Max has a mopping attachment that's separate from its reservoir, while the S6 Pure does not. It has more of an all-in-one mopping attachment. Separating the mopping attachment from the reservoir allows for a larger reservoir and electronic control of that reservoir. The S5 Max's reservoir has a capacity of 290 milliliters. The S6 Pure's reservoir is much smaller, with a capacity of only 180 milliliters. Reservoir capacity determines the robot's area of coverage. The S5 Max, with its larger reservoir, can cover more area before needing to be refilled with water. The S6 Pure, with its smaller reservoir, is able to cover less area before needing to be refilled with water. With the S5 Max, you can also use the Roborock app to control how much water the reservoir releases onto the mopping attachment over time. With the S6 Pure, you cannot use the app to control flow rate. You can still control flow rate, but you have to manually flip a switch on the reservoir to set it. Our testing showed that flow rate does impact performance, but once you have a flow rate that works, you're likely to just stick to that flow rate, which diminishes the value of the S5 Max's electronic control of this rate. Outside of these differences, the S5 Max and S6 Pure are very similar. In our mopping test, both robots cleaned the test surface equally well. In all other tests, the S5 Max and S6 Pure performed very similarly also. That is because, outside of mopping functionality, they have an almost identical design, with similar airflow and suction, essentially the exact same brush roll and brush roll compartment, and the exact same laser perched on the top of the robot for navigation. In our carpet stress test, their performance was nearly identical. In our carpet deep clean test, they picked up the exact same amount of debris. And in our hard floor stress test, they once again performed similarly, with very similar edge performance also. In our human hair pickup testing, their brush rolls both tangled with hair to the same extent. And in our pet hair pickup testing, both robots didn't have any issues at all. In our navigation testing, they again both performed equally well, navigating just as well as we would expect a LiDAR robot to navigate in these tests. Both robots are also full-fledged mapping robots that allow you to label rooms, set keep-out zones, and set cleaning zones. Both robots also have the exact same battery life, dustbin size, noise output, and dimensions. When it comes to making general recommendations, it's really a toss-up. You're getting essentially identical performance from either vacuum. So our recommendation is that you buy whichever model you can find cheaper. It's really that simple. Neither robot has any sizable advantage or disadvantage compared to the other. See the description of this video for links to buy these robots and for the latest list of all of the robot vacuums we recommend. And thank you for watching.